This video is going to be about adding square roots. If I have a problem like this, 2 times the square root of 5 plus 4 times the square root of 5, then adding the square roots is pretty simple since they're both the same thing. So I've got 2 and 4, that's going to give me a 6, times the square root of 5. I run into a problem if I have different square roots. This at first looks like it's impossible to do. I can't say I have two of either of these because they're both different. However, maybe I can simplify them and then find a way to add them together. So let's look at the square root of 12. Remembering that I can factor a number and hopefully, hopefully find uh, one of the factors as a perfect square, I'm going to think about the 12, and I realize that 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is a perfect square. And at the same time, 75 is 25 times 3. And now using the product rule, I can rewrite each of these radicals as two separate radicals. So I'm going to have the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. I'll then take the square root of I'll take the square root of uh, this 4 and so I'll get 2 times the square root of 3. Square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 3. Now my radicals, my roots, are both the same, the square root of 3 and the square root of 3, so I can add the 2 and the 5 together, and I'll get 7 times the square root of 3 as my answer. Let's look at, an, look at another one. So here we have 3 times the square root of 45 minus 2 times the square root of 80. We use the same procedure. I'm looking for two factors of 45 so that one of them is a perfect square. And I realize I can divide 45 by 9, so I'll get 3 times the square root of 9 times 5. Looking at the square root of 80, I'm once again going to try to find two factors, and I'm thinking, since I'm going to be left with this 5 under a radical sign, if I could get a 5 over here also, I'd be able to add my two, my two parts. So 5 goes into 80 16 times, and 16 is a perfect square. So let's rewrite this as 2 times the square root of 16 times 5. Once again, using the product rule, I'll break these down into separate radicals. 3 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 minus 2 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. Now I'll take my square roots. So I'm going to have 3 times 3, the square root of 9, times the square root of 5. Take the square root of 16. That's going to give me a 4 times the square root of 5. Multiply out my coefficients, so I'll have 3 times 3 is 9, times the square root of 5, minus 2 times 4 is 8, times the square root of 5. This was a subtraction problem, so I'll subtract the 9 minus the 8. I'll get a 1, times the square root of 5, and since I'm since I've got something multiplied by 1, I really don't have to write that 1. So my answer is going to be simply the square root of 5. And here's one more.
This at first seems harder, but really there's nothing here that we haven't covered already. There's just more steps, perhaps. So let's look at this. I've got 6 times the square root of 28 plus the square root of 63, all of that over 10. I'm going to start with my square roots. I look at the 28 and I try to figure out what factors do I have so that one of them is a perfect square. And I realize that 28 is the product of 4 and 7. So I'm going to rewrite this first part as 6 times the square root of 4 times 7. For the square root of 63, uh, I'm trying to find, once again, two factors so that one's a perfect square. And it would be nice if the other factor was a 7, because that way I would have a square root of 7 and a square root of 7 that I could combine. And in fact, I can divide 7 into 63 and get a 9, which is a perfect square. So let's write this as the square root of 9 times 7. And all of that is going to be over 10. Now I'm going to use the product rule and break each of my radicals down into two separate radicals. So I've got 6 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 plus the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. And all of that is over 10. Take my square roots, 6 times the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 7, plus 3, the square root of 9, times the square root of 7. Once again, everything over 10. Carry out my multiplication. So I've got 6 times 2 is 12, times the square root of 7 plus 3 times the square root of 7 over 10. I can now combine the two square roots since they're both the same. So I'll have 12 plus 3 is 15 times the square root of 7 over 10. And since I can divide the 15 and the 10 both by 5, I'll be able to reduce the fraction and turn this into 3 times the square root of 7 over 2. And that's going to be my simplified answer. That's about it for now. See you next time. Take care.